such a pleasure to gather here at the Adventure Science Center for the presentation of the uh, of the uh, Chambers Education Report Card. But one of the things that makes it so pleasant to gather here is is the great camaraderie that everyone in this room feels for each other and the unification of purpose uh, as it's aimed toward improving education. So we want to thank everyone and of course Susan Duvenhag is here, but we want to say what a great place it is to have this report every year in this presentation, the Adventure Science Center. Susan, thank you. Okay, now I'll refer to notes. Welcome to the 17th annual presentation of the Chambers Education Report Card. In a few moments, you're going to hear from the committee. You will also hear about the great deal of work that they have been doing through last fall and uh, into this winter as they prepared this report. Just a couple of quick comments I'd like to make before we get into the presentation. First of all, education remains the Chamber's number one priority. We believe it's the absolute foundation of prosperity for our community on, and for individual young people as well, and education remains our number one uh, priority for economic development and all other elements of prosperity that we seek to advance. We believe that bringing business and community le leaders together in this committee to have these discussions uh, is a very important interaction for the community and we appreciate very much the fact the, that this is a report undertaken with, in partnership with MNPS. There's great cooperation throughout this whole process and we want to say thank you for that cooperation and that participation as well. Uh, we'd also like to mention our sponsors because without the resources that are provided to the chamber we could not undertake a project like this and so everywhere we gather we like to mention the people that are particularly helpful in providing these resources. So for our pivotal sponsors Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee Collier's, Turley, Martin, Tucker, and Community Health Systems. So we want to say a special thank you to those pivotal partners because they support virtually every activity that we undertake. We also want to thank our associate sponsor, the City Paper, whose support enables the Chamber to continue the quality programming toward education initiatives. This is a particular focus of the City Paper and we appreciate their uh, special support. We also want to thank today's supporting sponsor, Lowe's Vanderbilt Hotel. Tom Negri and his staff help make the committee's work a little easier by providing facilities that we find very helpful in that process. So thank you to Tom Negri and his staff. So thank, let's join me in thanking these sponsors. The one bit of housekeeping that I'm known for at Chamber events, I will remind you that there is an evaluation on your seat. You can help us improve this event every year by filling that evaluation out and um, you won't be allowed to leave until you fill it out. They will be taken up at the door. So, um, so please fill that evaluation form out. Just a bit of history as we start. In 1992, the Chamber created the first education report card um, about the performance of public schools. And 17 years later, we still fulfill that need. One of the things that I'm proud to say is that this, this report card is referred to often over the course of the year by people who have an interest in improving education in this community. Last year's report card received nearly 3,000 views online and you realize as substantial as that report is how significant those 3,000 views are. And then there was a print run of 1,500 copies that were all distributed as well. So it gives me great pleasure because he absolutely, actually represents me in my school board district to introduce our first speaker of the day and then following him you will hear from uh, Mark Hill uh, who has led this effort from a staff perspective for the chamber. Um, I think everyone would agree that the conduct and the work of the school board over this last year has been particularly significant. I've heard it commented on across the community. 
and David Fox has been the chair of that group in this past year and we want to congratulate he and the school board on their efforts and their work over the last year. <laughs> David, come forward while there's applause. Keep it going, keep it going. Thank you very much, Ralph, for the support for the, uh, for the Board of Education. Um, when I spoke briefly at this event last February, it was my pleasure to assure you that the school board had just two months before selected a director of schools who is going to be bold in transforming our school district and would do so with a close eye on the chamber's report card. That was just two years after an earlier director of schools was quoted in a local newspaper saying, the chamber report is not something I worry about. It's a wonderful report, but it's not intended for the schools. The audience isn't us, it's the chamber, it's the community. Well, of course, see, that was nonsense. Unfortunately, the Board of Education didn't feel that way. And uh, the Board of Education doesn't feel that way now, of course. Um, but the big difference we have now is that we have a director of schools whose bold, comprehensive reform plans are informed by the wise counsel of years of education report cards. Rarely more than a few weeks pass that I don't hear Dr. Jesse Register remark that this or that is important because it has been identified in a report card. In fact, the starting point for his assessment and plan of action for our district was a study of all the critical analyses of our school district the past few years. If you ha had a chance to study the meta review of recent reports on MNPS, which was created by the Annenberg Institute of School Reform, then you saw the prominence the chamber reports had, it, had in its assessment. Annenberg's meta review cited years of chamber report cards, making such observations as, quote, the chamber reports are critical of the public reporting by MNPS on student outcomes as being too aggregated and lacking utility. And the 2006 chamber report notes that the MNEA and the district do not function as partners in school improvement and one chamber report describes MNPS as having a governance structure that lacks alignment of funding authority, policy making responsibility, and managerial effectiveness. So many of the report card suggestions are now finding their way into the school district's uh, transformation campaign, MNPS Achieves. As you know, MNPS Achieves is in the process of profoundly improving everything we do in our public schools by harnessing many of the best minds across our community including the Chamber's Chief Education Officer, Mark Hill, and several past community members of the Report Card Committee. Yesterday, as I reviewed last year's report, uh, report card recommendations, I found that about half are being specifically addressed by the MNPS Achieves Initiative. I expect this transformation campaign will result in Nashville being recognized in a few years as the most improved urban school system in our country. We have the focused, cohesive governing board and the uh, school board to do that. We have one of the most capable superintendents in America to do that. And we're blessed with the insightful critiques of the men and women of the Chamber Report Card Committee to do that. The school board's expectations for our school district and for the children we serve are very high, just as they should be. We know we can count on equally high expectations in the Chamber's Education Report Card to help keep us focused in striving for better results, to ensure that we equip all our students with a foundation of knowledge, skills, and character that they need to excel in college, work, and life. So on behalf of the Metro Nashville Board of Education, I am pleased to assure the members of the Metro, of the, excuse me, of the Report Card Committee that your efforts are highly valued and are greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, David. I'm Mark Hill, Chief Education Officer of the Nashville Area Chamber of Commerce. I want to take this moment to recognize, there are, of course, a lot of special people in the audience today, but we want to take time to recognize our elected officials that have taken time to join us, and particularly Council Members Ronnie Stein, Walter Hunt, Dwayne Dominey, Linnell Matthews, and Jamie Hollins. Thank you all for joining us today. Also, we have a majority of our school board with us today, and we appreciate that as well. Of course, Chair David Fox, we have Joanne Brannon, Mark North, Kay Simmons and Gracie Porter, thank you all for joining us as well. And I want to take a moment to also recognize past chairs of this committee. This committee is a lot of work and it requires a lot of volunteer effort. And leading this committee especially is a critical function. 
and we're blessed to have several co so formal chairs with us today. Ted Helm, who led this group for several years, Avi Poster as well, who I think chaired the 2006 committee that was referenced by David just a moment ago, and then Sonny Dixon. All three of those community leaders have spent a lot of time building the foundation of where we are today with the Chamber Report Card. So please join me in recognizing their accomplishments. I also see representatives of our teachers union here at MNEA. Thank you, Eric Kuth and Stephen Henry, for joining us. The committee membership, there's 23 members of the Education Report Card Committee. It is a diverse co committee representative from across the community. And about 80% of those members are chamber mem members. We do have, it is a chamber committee. It has a charter from the board, from the chamber board, that outlines the roles and responsibilities and the scope of the work. In particular, this committee focuses each year on school system performance. That's a given. Every year we look at the data and the information to provide an assessment of how our school system performs. But also the committee chooses two focus topics each year to delve into detail. It's on, it chosen from a list outlined in the charter. And this year's committee chose school system funding and special student populations as its two focus issues. And that's what you'll be hearing today. This time I'd like to introduce the members of the committee and as you'll call your name, if you could please stand and remain standing until the end of the, the roster and they will recognize you at that time. Price Bell with DZL Management Company. Luz Beleza with Metropolitan Social Services. Keith Belton, Elfton Cluster Parent. Reverend Ray Bowman, pastor of Spruce Street Baptist Church and president of IMF. Pam Daly with DK Brand Strategy. Andrea Dillenberg with the Nashville Ballet. Jacoby Adal with Healthways, Katrina Haley with Highwoods Properties, Michael Hayes with CB Raglan Company, John Hilly with Patmos, Councilman Linnell Matthews, also with the YMCA of Middle Tennessee, Ginger Hauser Pepper, Tennessee State University, Virginia Perkle with Conexion Americas, Khaled Sakala with the International Academy of Design and Technology, Benjamin Smith with You Speaks Nashville. Bobby Lee Smith, Boys and Girls Club of Middle Tennessee. Jay Tift, ALOC Group. Margaret Whitfield, retired Metro Schools teacher. Cynthia Will with Hubbard Berry and Harris. And Doug Williams with Middle Tennessee State University. This group has worked incredibly hard over the past six months, and they were led by two outstanding leaders, our two co-chairs for this year, and I'd like them to stand at this time and join me at the podium. Dr. Christian Arthur of Tennessee State University and Cabot Pyle of the James Stephen Turner Family Foundation. Please join me in recognizing the outstanding work. And now I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to Chris and Cabot to present this year's report card. Thank you, Mark. Good morning. And Mark failed to mention that he he was the leader that really had that group working every Friday so very well. I want to begin by acknowledging your leadership, Mark. Please join me as we acknowledge Mark leadership. <laughs> we begin our presentation like we have in the past years with an assessment of the school system performance during the year 2008-2009. It was a year we believe that had two parts to it. It began in turmoil, but ended, we think, in a turnaround. In the fall of 2008, the committee saw turmoil because of the following reasons. The school system was awaiting permanent leadership at the time, it seemed to have lacked focus. There were significant tensions between the school system and the Tennessee Board of Education over the role that the state has to play in that, in that system, as well as with the city, as the role the city had to play as it proposed the plan to merge the functions of the city library and the school library. Third, the board was engaged in a long search process, took almost a year, as it searched for a new school director. And that search, we thought, had little or no involvement from the border community. However, in the spring of 2009, we saw hope and we saw signs of a turnaround. 
Dr. R Jesse Register was hired as a permanent director of schools in January of 2009. And with his hire, he initiated and we recognized the school district, the school system. First, he recruited several new members of his leadership team that helped him to focus on what he was doing. And then he reassigned over 300 central office and itinerant staff back into the school. And that reorganization, we thought, was a sign of a turnaround. In May of 2009, he initiated MMPS Achieves. He appointed nine transformational leadership groups, and that included district and community members. And the impetus was created that can drive the school system forward. Consequently, because of those two pieces, two halves of the last year, 2008-2009, in our assessment, we thought that year was one of cautious optimism. Cautious optimism for several reasons. And we shall begin with a few commendations that led us to those optimisms. First, the district made AYP adequate yearly progress under the No Child Left Behind Act, and that moved the district into an improving status. If the district makes AYP again at the end of this academic year, it will then be moving into a good standing. And to us, that's optimism. The percentage of students who are dropping out from school has declined to 4.4%. And that's a signal that the district school reform efforts are making good progress. We're optimistic. The high school attendance rose to 91%, demonstrating that the city's focus on truancy is paying off. And for that, we are also optimistic. Newsweek magazine has, again, ranked Hume Fogg, MLK, Hillsborough High School as among the top high schools in the nation. That is news for optimism. However, there are some challenges that we face. Hence, the reason for caution. If the district failed to make AYP this year, the district risks being placed in the new state achievement school district. And that caused us to be cautious. Secondly, the ACT composite for the district continues to decline. It is now at 19.0. And it's a foul cry from the 21 that's needed for the Hope Scholarship. So that's an area that we felt was of concern. The state has initiated new standards, which are going to take our state from among the lowest to the weakest standards to the most rigorous. And that would have implications for the district as well. Further, with declining tax revenues, the fact that we have spent our reserves, the fact that we have a flat funding from the state, and over $30 million in additional budget needs for the coming fiscal year, there seems to be a funding crisis on the horizon for metro schools. And that, to us, raises caution. Metro schools' business practices need to be uh, received a complete overhaul in order for it to operate in a more efficient and effective manner. Look with me at Metro's 2009 grades on the state report card. Let's know that the state will set a benchmark here in anticipation of the Tennessee Diploma Project standards. Consequently, many school districts saw their grades drop or decline from last year. And although this year's grades should not be compared to the previous results because of that we set in the benchmark, we have included last year's results for historical reference. 
As you can see, Metro has received all these for grades three through eight in achievement. If we were to look at the value added gains, and again, the benchmark was reset, which also resulted in lower grades that cannot be or should not be compared to the previous years. And value added for grades three through eight, Metro received C's across the board, which um, coincides with the state's average gains. So Metro's average gains are coinciding with the state's average gains. This new chart shows the cells or student subgroups that are reported under No Child Left Behind. The green pluses indicate the group that made AYP or adequate yearly progress. The red X's are those cells or subgroups that did not make AYP. And the report card committee this year looked at those special populations and ironically, African American students, those who are economically disadvantaged, failed to make AYP. And consequently, all the students in that reading category, the elementary and middle school level, failed to make AYP. Um, this new chart shows the subgroups for the high school in math and reading. As you can see, all of those subgroups, those cells, have the green pluses causing Metro to make AYP for this past year because those subgroups all made or met AYP. There are two criteria that may be used that could qualify a district for making our AYP. They either have to make AYP at the elementary, middle school level or the high school level. And last year, Metro made AYP because the subgroups at the high school level all met the benchmark. And I will invite Cabot to conclude our presentation. Thank you, Chris. And I, uh, I worked for a PR firm many years ago, and I've written hundreds of speeches, but I've given very, very few. So it's good to look out and see that I'm among friends. I even see my former pastor here. So Charles, if you want to lift up a prayer for me real quick, feel free. <laughs> we ready? Good. Um, since, uh, since 2008, the Chamber has conducted a public opinion poll on education each May for inclusion in the report card. The poll is conducted with 500 randomly called Davidson County residents. The good news is public perception of Metro schools improved in May 2009 over the previous year. Is Nashville headed in the right direction? 70% believe it is, up slightly from 68% last year. Education is still far and away the most important issue facing Nashville, even with the economy and crime both rising in concern from 2008. 87% of Nashvillians believe improving education is important to them personally, also up from 2008. A little more than half thought Metro schools were about the same as last year, while 19% thought they were better and 14% thought they were worse. But when asked to rate the system, elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools on a scale of one to five, respondents gave higher marks in 2009 than in 2008 across the board. The top three education issues for Nashvillians are graduation rates, funding, and teacher pay and performance. 78% of Nashvillians believe Metro should provide more funding for public education to meet challenges, up from 71% in 2008. Now to shift gears to this year's report. Each year the report card committee issues 10 recommendations for improvement. In this year's report, you can read Metro Schools' response to last year's recommendations as well, and we are especially pleased to see that one of last year's report card recommendations, putting all zoned high schools on a uniform type of class schedule, will be in place in the coming school year. 
This year's recommendations come from the areas of school system performance, school funding, and special student populations. Under the theme of school system performance, first recommendation, implement fully, implement fully the CSS recommendations to transform Metro schools' business processes. Second, leverage the resources of Metro government to improve the quality of our schools by creating or expanding strong partnerships with the city library, parks, police, and health departments. And third, develop a district-level expectation for parental involvement that supports and reinforces each child's learning outside of school in partnership with city officials, business leaders, and community nonprofits. Turning now to the topic of education funding. First recommendation there is complete the promised state funding for English, English language learners to meet the class size ratio of 1 to 20. Secondly, call a constitutional convention early in the next governor's term for the purpose of designing an education funding and delivery system capable of achieving the new Tennessee Diploma Project standards. And thirdly, under funding, report annually the amount of funding each metro school receives. Report annually the amount of funding each metro school receives in total and by category of funds, such as teacher salaries, Title I funding, private support, and other categories. Now turning to special, popula special student populations. First, educate students in the most inclusive setting possible. Repeat, educate students in the most inclusive setting possible with appropriate training and supports for general education teachers. Second, develop a system-wide strategy to meet the needs of an increasingly diverse student population that includes recruiting multilingual teachers and principals, providing ongoing cultural competency and diversity training for all school staff, and staffing translation services adequately. Third, create a spectrum of programs to meet the wide range of student special needs, from a metro school or a charter school focused solely on supporting older special education students who are ready to transition from school to work, to an expansion of services that challenge gifted students to reach their full potential. And the final recommendation in this category and in the report, connect supplemental education services provided through the federal Title I program to the city's after-school initiatives, with the mayor taking a leadership role in promotion, coordination, and quality assurance. At this time, we'd like to bring up the leader of Metro Metropolitan Nashville Public Schools, Dr. Jesse Register, for his reaction and response to this year's report card. Thank you, thank you very much, Cabot. Good morning. It's great to see all of you this morning. Uh, I would like to thank first the Metro, uh, the Nashville Area Chamber of Commerce and the community volunteers who have worked to produce a very thoughtful and very thorough and meaningful report on Metro Nashville Public Schools. I especially want to thank the co-chair, Dr. Chris Arthur and Cabot Powell, who uh, co-chaired this year's event, and Mark Hill, who has so, worked so very hard uh, to pull this report together. Last year, when, when this event happened, I had only been here a few weeks uh, and the, uh, when the report card was released. This year, I've been here during the time that the report was developed, and I know how much time the co-chair and the committee puts into this work, uh, and it shows. Thank you for the time and energy that you've put into this and the commitment that you've made uh, to do this. The quality shows in the report that's issued. Uh, I, think, I think my remarks to you, in my remarks to you, I would like to echo the sense of cautious optimism uh, that's been articulated in this report and was highlighted. Um, this event was uh, uh, one of the first events that I attended last year, and it was an opportunity for me to meet many of you for the first time. And at that time, I gave reasons for optimism. Uh, I spoke of the good fortune 
of having Mayor Carl Dean, who is such a strong advocate for quality education uh, in Nashville. I spoke of the good fortune of having a very strong and focused Board of Education uh, and the leadership of David Fox as chairman of that Board of Education. They're the best school board I've ever worked with. And, and Mayor Dean is the best mayor, education mayor I've ever worked with. I spoke of the community support I saw for creating a quality public school system for Nashville, including the active support of the chamber and many other community organizations and individuals, many of whom are represented in this room today. Thank you for your work. All of these reasons for optimism last year have proven to be valid. There are two reasons for my caution this year. Both are highlighted in the report, and I will speak briefly to those. First, as is noted in the report card, standards for student achievement have changed. We have moved from being a state with some of the lowest standards in the country to having what I heard Commissioner Tim Webb describe as the second highest standards in the country just behind Massachusetts. The standards are higher and the test has changed. I recently learned in a presentation that when the new standards that we will be tested on this year are applied to high school mathematics uh, performance across the state of Tennessee, that there was only one high school in the state that would have made adequate yearly progress. Only one high school in this state based on last year's test performance would make adequate yearly performance based on this year's scores. Think about, think about that. I fully support the new standards, uh, and I know that our students can achieve at much higher levels, but I also know that success will not happen in one year, and that across this state this year, new standards will cause a drop in the number of students in schools that meet the new standards. How this transition is implemented and how we perceive this transition is very important. By the way, uh, the high school that passed adequate yearly performance in this state, the one is Schumfog High School. My second area, uh, my second area of caution is based upon the continued economic conditions in our state and here in Nashville. I appreciate the support for adequate uh, funding expressed in the chamber report. And I ask you to stand with Mayor Dean, with the Metro Council, with the school board, as we face an extremely tough year this year. Today in our school system, we face a $35 million shortfall for next year, on top, top of $22 million in reductions that were implemented this year. I'll tell you that we're doing everything we can to make the best, of, best use of the resources that we have including that CSS study. We will implement all 102 recommendations of that CSS study. Uh, and we are tightening our belts to the point of cutting off circulation. Uh, but significant damage is unavoidable under these circumstances. We must all work together to face this challenge. Now I want to change back and close on a note of optimism, if I may, that I have today. And it is not just a naive optimism that some thought I had last year. The comprehensive reform strategies that are being developed and implemented in the district are getting traction. The partnership between Metro Nashville Public Schools and Metro government is growing positively and paying off. Community support is making a difference. We have good communication and are developing a good working relationship with MNEA, our teachers union. That's essential for, for uh, success. The engagement of the business community uh, in our development of academies and small learning communities and our comprehensive high schools is working now. Our efforts to attract, support, and retain the very best teachers in all of our schools will be successful. I have confidence that our principals and teachers are committed to improving the quality of instruction for our students, and I have confidence that if we stay the course, 
we will become the best urban school district in this country. Our new partnership with Peabody College at Vanderbilt to offer a free master's degree for teachers who agree to work in our school system for five years is just one example of recruiting the very best teachers that we can recruit to work with our students. The path that we're taking is sustainable uh, and, we and will result, re result in long-term gains in student achievement and long-term success in our schools. I ask you to stay with us as we transform the system and as we face those tough challenges this year. Again, I want to thank the Chamber and the Report Card Committee for your valuable assessment, for your recommendations for setting future direction. You're right on target. We are focused in the same direction. Uh, now, uh, I want to close by uh, having the pleasure of inviting Mayor Carl Dean to the podium. Mayor Dean, uh, I want to publicly thank you for your commitment to public education and for your continued support for quality public schools in Nashville. Your leadership helps create optimism that we should all have about the future of education in our community. Thank you and welcome. Thank you. Um, it is a pleasure to be here, and I would echo the remarks that this report today should give us all optimism. I think uh, the schools have made a lot of progress, and I want to publicly thank Dr. Register for the role he's played in that. He has done, I think, a tremendous job, and I think as you just witnessed, he is a strong and direct communicator, which I think is, is just vital for the role that he plays in this community. I also want to thank um, the principals, the teachers, and the support staff who are committed every day to our students and to their learning. Uh, since taking office, I have uh, made it clear that it, my top priority is public education. Um, I spent really the last couple days uh, talking a lot about economic development and talking a lot about the future of our city and the way our city is positioned uh, nationwide. And I do believe, very fundamentally, uh, and, and we can't lose track of this, that there are we're coming into the baseball season. It's going to start next week. The pitchers and catchers report. That's, that's, an, that's an applause. That's an applause line. That there are there are three fundamentals. There are three pitches we have to hit, and the most vital pitch that we have to hit as a community every day is public education. The second one is public safety, and the third is economic development. And you've heard me say this before, and it's true. All of these are connected. We cannot be the safe city that we want to be, even though we have a fantastic police department that is reducing crime for six consecutive years without quality public schools. We cannot have the economic development that we need and we want and that and we should have because of the greatness of the city without having quality public schools. Right? And we have to stay focused on that. And so as we talk about these difficult economic times, I want you to understand that the way I look at the decisions the government makes, it really boils down to what your priorities are. And I have made it, I hope, hopefully clear for, and you're probably tired of hearing me talking about it, for the last three years. My priorities are education, safety, and economic development. And so when you're cutting up the pie, so what you do in the budget process, that's really what it fundamentally boils down to. The things that we have to protect are education, and uh, public safety. And that will be what will guide me in the, in the, in the months ahead. And you have um, my commitment, and I know the commitment of the Metro Council, which is so well represented here today, that we will stay focused on public education, that we will keep that as a priority, a number one priority. This is a special time in our city. This is a special time in our state. We have, uh, I think, a great governor a governor who is as committed to public education as any leader in this country, a governor who has positioned us very well in the uh, race of the top grant money from the Department of Education, a governor who took the brave political step of saying that we're no longer going to measure our students below national standards, we're going to measure them at the top, which was the right thing to do. We have a business community that is committed to our schools, and you, can, you see it in the report card, but you see it 
uh, and what Dr. Register meeting we attended this week together in terms of uh, working on career academies and the level of support in the business community that was, was brought together to help get the career academies up and running and being successful. You see it every day. So I want to say thank you to the chamber, which has done great work, and to our business community for stepping up. You see it in our school board that has made difficult decisions, have come together, and have, have supported Dr. Register's great work. You see it in our council, which has done the right thing in terms of the budget for the last two years in supporting public education in very difficult budget years, and we have another one coming now. Uh, there is never going to be a moment, I don't think, where we come in and deliver a report card or receive a report card where we say, we've won, it's over. We got it all right, we got all A's, let's go home. It's, this is going to take continual effort year after year and the recognition that always public education will be the number one priority. And I am particularly uh, grateful for this report card for a variety of reasons. There are some things that the, in the report card recommendations that, I, that are very dear and, and to me. Um, I am very gratified to see the recommendation that we leverage the resources of the metropolitan government in a way that they can help improve our schools. We have an exciting new initiative we announced, or we, we tried to announce because there are snow days, we haven't been able to really formally do it. We've, we sent a press release out anyway uh, with our public libraries, which is a first step. We made an announcement last week of a new volunteer program where Metro employees working for the general government can volunteer in our schools each week um, and be paid. And it's the right thing to do because schools are part of our government and schools are, are fundamental to our future but we need to continue to work on that. We don't need to be operating in silos. I'm very gratified to see the recommendations regarding special education. Uh, the idea of that we will have um, inclusive education for children with special needs is, is very important. Um, again, I'll thank Dr. Register for this. One of the first things I did as mayor was set up an advisory group on special education. It was a group of citizens in this community, I felt, who were very disinfected with the way things were going and I've noticed a change in the atmosphere, and so has the advisory committee. And we need to keep working on that. I'm excited about the idea of establishing a charter school, another school to help kids with special education find careers. And I, nothing would make me prouder as mayor of Nashville than for Nashville to be the city that is known for having the best program in that regard in the whole country. And we can do it. We've got the resources here. Um, the recommendation regarding after school programming Dr. Register and I already co-chair a, a group working on that, and we will continue to work on that. I'm not competitive by nature, but there are cities like Providence, Rhode Island that we're behind. That's not good. We're not, we, can't, we, 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 need to, we need to catch up and get ahead of other cities in terms of our after-school programming, and we will. But everything in the report, I think, is excellent. Um, I appreciate all the hard work that went into it, and I appreciate all of your commitment to education. It's a good thing that when you come to an education meeting in the middle of the day and you can't find a seat, that's, that's a good thing. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Dean. Again, we thank our sponsors, the City Paper, Lowe's Vanderbilt Hotel, and also, of course, the Venture Science Center for hosting us each year. Thanks to each of you who have chosen to invest in your success through being a chamber member. If you're a chamber member or a future member and you are interested in serving on the Education Report Card Committee in the future, I urge you to contact me. Next year's committee will be assembled this summer with work beginning in September. Finally, please complete the survey at your seat. Your input does help us better meet your needs as members and staff will be ready to collect those on your way out. Everybody that's here today on your way out will get a hard copy of this year's report card and thank you again for attending. You know, Metro Public Schools has such a diverse population. Um, there's been an increase in diversity um, across the board, and so one of our focus groups, our subcommittees for this year, um, this year's report card was a focus on special student populations. So, particularly uh, speaking of children of diverse backgrounds, there's a huge set of needs that accompany this diverse student body. Um, a lot of the needs that we've seen after participating in this committee involve just needs for professional development. Um, these, this, this population comes with a special set of um, cultural differences and things like that that really, and a special set of academic needs as well that accompany that. 
Um, so professional development is, is definitely needed, and we're moving in a positive direction in that. Um, another big issue that could really, really help improve, um, you know, just meeting the needs of these, these students is the inclusion model for English language learners. Um, there's definitely a, a place for a sheltered classroom setting for students that do not have a knowledge, a good knowledge of English, um, to help them get them get off their feet um, in that in that way. But you really want to put students in the most inclusive setting possible, most inclusive classroom, so that they can learn from their peers and be challenged by their peers and grow in that way. I also think a huge need in this diverse community is parent involvement. The parent involvement piece is huge. Getting these families involved, getting these parents involved in their child's education. A lot of times um, people that come from different backgrounds, whether they're immigrants, families, um, or anything like that, they just don't know um, how the system works or that they should be involved at the level that, that we need them to be. So parent involvement is also a huge piece. Well, spoken word poetry, which is a, a performance poetry, uh, really intended for immediate impact and connection with the audience um, really speaks developmentally to where teens are especially in terms of self-expression and building literacy skills and presentation skills and leadership skills because a lot of this is a way for young people to access their leadership capabilities um, so it combines all those elements in a really nice way Additionally, it brings in um, positive role models, additional positive role models into the schools so the young people can imagine themselves who they're going to be and how they're going to be that positive person themselves one day. The report card committee is such an important factor and an important value uh, that it adds to the uh, metro school systems in the, in, the, in the way that it assesses the uh, system and provides uh, recommendations to the school board, superintendent, the director of schools to uh, make uh, uh, improvements. Uh, the report card committee uses the prior year assessment as a basis, which uh, like today we're publishing the recommendations in February. The next report card committee will resume in September and start working on uh, new recommendations. So we will use the assessment we did for this year as a basis to start the next year's uh, work. And a lot of the work is done by interviewing many of the stakeholders. Uh, we talked to the members of the business community, uh, members of the uh, school board, uh, members of like uh, the uh, chair of the school board, David Fox, and uh, we talked to the mayor, we talked to principals and teachers and students and everybody. And uh, when you uh, hear all the uh, different uh, uh, point of views of uh, the people we talk to, uh, the, the, the committee discusses those uh, different uh, elements that we hear and we come up with recommendations that largely will benefit the, uh, the, school, uh, the school system. I think the uh, report card um, report is very important for the community because it reinforces for Nashvilleians that public education is the most important issue. Uh, we saw that today. Um, there's a, a high regard uh, about the importance of education. And, and I, um, I'm on the, serving on the committee and I think it's important for the community because youth are our assets in this community, both now as contributors and future as, uh, in the future as contributors because of the economic impact that they will have upon the city. And so um, the school system has 70,000 plus young people and so it should be not only of my concern but also the whole community's concern. Well, it was very important in coming to Nashville to establish a vision for the principals and is uh, the vision is that in three to five years in Metro Nashville Public High Schools will graduate world-class students who are ready for career, ready for college, and ready to make uh, the best choices in life. All of our students will belong to personalized learning environments that uh, focus on relationships and then raising the bar with community enrichment and business partnerships. We're actually in the midst of uh, redesigning our high schools. Uh, we have 25 high schools under three categories, magnet schools, uh, alternative high schools and then we have our comprehensive high schools. At this point we're working very diligently to redesign our comp 12 comprehensive high schools into smaller personalized learning environments focused around high skill, high wage, targeted industries and, and creating that partnership with the community, the businesses, the uh, colleges and universities so we can start a pipeline of kids in the ninth grade making choices that affect the rest of their life very informed choices about what high-level courses they want to take, what universities and colleges they want to go into, and what uh, careers within our community that allow those kids to, to perform at their highest level, make high wages, and stay here in Nashville. Very important.